and welcome back to the channel because today it's not Belmont Bunch. Today we're talking about the New York Jets. Oh, hey, we're very sad. Let's talk about the season. Uh, I have a little handy dandy sheet here of last year's stats for the Jets. And let's talk about how bad they were. So the Jets last year went 7-9, and nine, which was impressive after, I think, starting like 2-10. and 10. And, um, yeah, we had the easiest schedule in the league, which made us look like an okay team. But that's false. Because here's our stats. Offensive, overall offense, 31st. Passing offense, 29th. Mind you, these are all out of 32. Rushing offense, 31st. Uh, defense, though. So Adam Gase, who's mostly in charge of the offense, even though he's the head coach, not the offensive coordinator, we all know he's pretty much the offense coordinator as well, was supposed to come in and change the game. Little did we know that would mean get worse. Uh, defense. Uh, Greg Williams, defensive coordinator, did a pretty good job with a not great unit. Jets go 16th overall in defense, so it kept them in games, especially at the end of the year. Passing defense, 17th. So, mediocre. Rushing defense, second. As Pat Mayo would say, that's a great defense for 1990s football. But guess what? Everybody passes now. Uh, so, we're having a great rush defense. Doesn't mean that much. So, anyway, let's get into the offseason additions and subtractions. Uh, they're arguably a worse team on the field, even though they made a good trade in the offseason. So, Jamal Adams wanted out. We obliged. We got two first-round picks back, and we got a player uh, who's going to take his place, McDougal, who's not bad in his own right. He's not Adams by any extent, um, but it is a guy to fill a position. And if that isn't a Jets thing, I don't know what is. But so, the Jets add, well, that's subtraction there. They add a few picks, but they get worse on the field uh, defensively. Offensively, um, they bring in a couple of receivers, which is good because we needed Sam Darnold to have something to work with because we are ruining this man's career in front of my eyes. And that just feels bad watching a guy younger than me have his career ripped apart. It's fun. No, it's not. Why did I say it's fun? I didn't actually mean to say that. The Jets have not made the playoffs in nine years. And they're not going to do it again this year. Wait, no, we have to make our predictions first. I can't just do that. Anyway. Spoiler. Spoiler. All right. So uh, they get worse defensively by a little, by a decent-ish margin. They lose Mosley not to injuries or anything. He has opted out of the season. Um, it's his right to do that, and I'm not going to criticize him, especially when he was hurt most last year. I don't know. Guy's getting a paycheck. My stomach just really went off. Um, offensively, we brought in two receivers. We brought in Perriman. Um and we drafted Denzel Mims. It's hard year one for a receiver to have a ton of, um, you know, a ton, a ton to affect the team uh, because they're probably not going to immediately get a huge workload. Um, and I don't know if I trust Adam Gase, even if he was going to get a large workload. Anyway, let's just get into the games before I just talk myself into oblivion, which I already have started to. Uh, so the Jets, week one at Buffalo this Sunday. Um, I, I think I saw ESPN has their little like percent chance of winning meter, and it was like 63 to Buffalo. And I'm going to agree with that. So it won't be a blowout, I don't think. Uh, Buffalo is a, a pretty decent team with a great defense, uh, a decent offense. Uh, I think this will be uh, Jet Buffalo games tend to be pretty low scoring. Uh, last year, both games were pretty competitive, which is good news for the Jets. The Jets actually could have won both. Uh, week one, the Jets were up 16-0, and they lost 17-16. to I was there at the game. I'm a season ticket holder. Yes, I'm also an asshole. Um, so... Man, we're not going to get sponsored by the Jets anytime soon. Uh, Buffalo took that one 17-16. End of the season, the Jets beat them. But the Buffalo had clinched the playoffs already, and they're just resting everyone. And even then, the Jets just barely beat their backups. Not a great sign. But uh, in Buffalo especially, uh, Jets are not great on the road. We'll give that to Buffalo. Uh, San Francisco, at home. 
yeah, that team that was in the Super Bowl last year, they're going to beat the Jets. Hot take. Uh, San Francisco has fantastic coaching, uh, except if it's in the Super Bowl, apparently. Uh, they are very creative with how they utilize their running backs and how they utilize their offense in general. I think Greg Williams can uh, hold that, uh, keep it honest a little bit. Um, but offensively, so San Francisco also contains a pretty good defense. And the Jets do not contain a good offense, based on the things I read you before. The Jets' offensive line is probably a little bit better, but hasn't had any game action together as a unit and has a rookie guarding Sam's uh, blind side. So that could be an issue. That's why uh, Buffalo, I think, is going to shred them because Buffalo gets to the quarterback. San Francisco can do the same thing. So 0-2 to start. Already we're drinking heavily. But week three at Indy. Interesting matchup because I think Indy, uh, they, they're, they're pretty good. They're not great. They brought in a quarterback who I don't like, and I think Brissett should be their starter. And there's still enough weapons there to make them an interesting team this year, Indy. They have a good defense. They've got some playmakers on offense. But I'm going to give the Jets the W here, surprisingly. This is mostly based off of um, I just don't trust Phillip Rivers, and I think this is too early in the season for Rivers to have lost the job already, uh, though that could happen at some point. And um, the Jets... I just tend to play okay in road domes. So, yeah, they beat Detroit uh, in Sam's first game. They have beaten Indy the last couple years, um, although that was at home. Anyway, uh, Denver. Denver. Um, Denver had a brutal injury the other day. Von Miller. Uh, that's big because that keeps one guy, one more guy from getting to the Jets quarterbacks. Denver was a pretty decent team last year that got hot late. Still didn't make the playoffs. Kind of similar to us, but probably a little bit more upside in them with uh, the way that they've set up Drew Locke for success. Um, they bring in Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon's a good running back. Uh, well, he's a decent running back. It's a good tandem with him and Lindsey. I'm going to give the Jets the win, though, because I Denver losing Von Miller's big for their pass rush. Uh, the Jets, maybe their offensive line is getting it together at this point. And... Um, you know, Sam, to me, at, at home, I've seen good things from Sam. And against Denver, I've seen actually Dan, uh, Dan, I've seen uh, Darnold uh, shred Denver at home before. Uh, that was one of the better games I've seen him play so far. Get the W there, so all of a sudden the Jets are back in it. They pull you right back in. They don't let you just off easy. Um, and then they play Arizona, and then they lose. Just when you've, the hope has been restored, and it's gone. Um... I think this is an interesting game. It's a Jet home game. The Jets have tended to be better at home. What a shock. That's most teams. Um, here's the main thing for me in this game. Who is stopping DeAndre Hopkins? We don't have Mosley to contain Kyler Murray. We don't have anyone to cover DeAndre Hopkins because they're secondary. We have good safeties in Marcus May and McDougal. I'm not sure if I'm fully in on the corners for the Jets. Brian Poole's fine. But, uh, yeah, give me DeAndre Hopkins in that matchup. So, Jets 2-3. and three. Going to the Chargers. Chargers, another team. Uh, transition year for them. Tyrod's at quarterback. Maybe it's Herbert at this point. But if Herbert's already in, then that, they're terrible. But the Jets. Sam from California. Sam going back home. Sam who likes to play in warm conditions. He gets it done. And the Jets. Get back to 3-3. Three and three. Chargers have a good defense, and the loss of Derwin James is something, but they'll still be pretty good defensively. I expect this to be a pretty interesting game. I have an Austin Eckler in fantasy, so I hope it's high scoring. Um, but the Jets' offense is very streaky, and I see this three-game stretch, this four-game stretch, including Indy, Denver, Arizona, and Char Chargers, basically defines the Jets' season. There are four winnable games. There are four games they could lose all of them. Uh, so... I have us going 3-1 and one in that stretch, so I must be on something. Anyway, uh, home against Buffalo. Now, like I said, we give Buffalo a good fight. Division games are tough uh, because you know your opponent pretty well. Buffalo, I say we get to them in this game. I, am I okay? Am I okay? Um, I, You know, 
both games were so tight last year, and it does kind of feel like the Jets are due to get one on the Bills. And, you know, the Bills are so good defensively, this will be a really low-scoring game. But uh, I think at home, the Jets tend to get a little bit of a boost. And uh, we'll say uh, they split. They split with Buffalo this year, and we would take that in a heartbeat because uh, of how good Buffalo's defense is. Uh, this would have to be you know, a big dump-off to Bell type game because Tredavious White is going to shut down any receiver that he covers. Uh, so the Jets would have to take advantage of Jamison Crowder, um, you know, running some good slot routes and get uh, dump-offs to their uh, aging running back and also Le'Veon Bell. All right, so at this point, the Jets are 4-3, and three and we're wondering, is this... Uh, no, and then we lose 58 to nothing in, in Kansas City. Just do you, do you like? Do I have to go into it? It's Patrick Mahomes against the Jets defense from last year, but a little bit worse. We're losing. We're losing this game. If you have Patrick Mahomes in fantasy, be careful. He might be out of this game by halftime because they're probably up forty to nothing at halftime. So four and four to the first half of the season. I think any Jet fan takes that in a heartbeat. I think I'm a little bit moronic to even think this is possible. Let's start. Um, Week nine now, home against New England. And you know how I said we can split with Buffalo. Div division games are tough, and I think it's, you know, you could win that home half. Not against New England. I would like to get any evidence that the New York Jets could even compete with New England before I pick them to win a game against New England. The Jets have not beaten New England since 2015. We play them twice a year. Every year, we haven't beat them since 2015. I was at the game. I was still in college. What's wrong with me? Anyway, um, New England, Cam Newton will still be able to run wild on the Jets. Um, I still think they'll be able to, that New England will be a pretty decent team. I have them being a wild card team. I think um, Cam Newton adds a new dimension to their attack. And their offensive coordinator, McDaniels, uh, likes moving quarterbacks. And New England, just a well-coached team. They'll get everything out of the team that they can. They lost some defensive players in the offseason, but they still have a really good secondary. And uh, I think James White could have a really big year with Cam Newton. Maybe he turns him into CMC, but not obviously not to the same extent. But anyway, at Miami, Week 10. So the Jets are at this point, what were, uh, we were 4-4-5. Four, four and five. And I'm not, oh, I'm going to leave you in suspense. I'm going to leave you in, uh, it's, a, it's another loss. It's another. So uh, the Jets split with Miami last year. And that was a year where Miami was dreadful. And one of those games uh, we just didn't show up to. That was the game in Miami. And then the home game, we beat Miami on a last second field goal and carried our kicker off the field. It, it, there are not many more pathetic things than celebrating beating a team that finished 5-11 on a last-second field goal at home in front of your fans, who you've now embarrassed even though you won the game. Um, so this one's in Miami. I'm going to give Miami that game. Miami, uh, in the offseason, made some good pickups, uh, poached some Patriots. And I like their coach, Brian Flores. He got everything out of them last year that he could have. We all thought they were going to win one game last year. They won five, and they beat the Patriots in Week 17. Um, but I also have seen... Year two, Ryan Fitzpatrick before as a Jet, and I know it doesn't go as well. Uh, I kind of hope that Tua is starting at this point. Week 11, bye. We're going to go with a loss. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. Kidding. We might. We might lose. Um, so th that's your off week. Um, drink to your heart's content in that game, that week. Um, then back-to-back -back against Miami. So, you know, back-to-back -back with a bye in between. Uh, this one's at home, and I'm going to say it's another 18-17, uh, you know, last-second field goal. I gave us the wrong, well, I put in the wrong one, but uh, spoiler alert, I was going to have us win that game anyway, so that'll just transition us, but not yet, so I guess it won't transition us. Miami, what I said about Ryan Fitzpatrick, and you know, they've made additions, but I still think the Jets and the Dolphins are pretty much on the same level, that is to say, not very good. Then, I, I've already given you that one, Vegas. At the Jets, I went to, um, well, I go to all the games, but last year Vegas came in, or at that time they were still uh, Oakland, and they come in and the Jets 
beat the crap out of them. The coaching there with Gruden is is pretty hard nosed. It's very old school, and, and it, it it he he got a, a decent amount out of that team. But I don't know. This team could be in turmoil by this week uh, because I don't know what the situation is with Derek Carr and Gruden. And I, other than Josh Jacobs, they've lost a, another receiver to injury now, and Hunter Renfro is kind of have to be their number one. Him and Darren Waller, it's an okay lineup, but I mean the Jets beat them last year, thirty-four to three. I think we get it again this year at home. So uh, that's two wins in a row. Oh, uh, once again we're kind of flirting with maybe, and then we run into a stretch of games that is not very pretty at Seattle. I'm going to just go ahead and give that one a loss. Seattle, who is my favorite to win the NFC this year, um, Russell Wilson is just going to be able to run rings around us. Uh, they have a pretty decent running game. We could neutralize that. That keeps it interesting. But Russell Wilson, just as a playmaker, is unbelievable. Seattle's really good at home. Not as much as they were in their heyday, but they're still good. Russell Wilson's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Uh, he does a lot with a little. And this could be a lot closer than I would have first thought because we were the second-ranked rush defense last year. It's a team that runs the ball a lot. But at the end of the day, Russell Wilson as a playmaker is unbelievable. Uh, Seattle, their pass rush is not what it used to be. Their secondary is still pretty decent. Jamal Adams' revenge game. Uh, yeah, I just think it works out for Seattle in that one. Um, L.A. Rams. L.A., a team that got to the Super Bowl two years ago. Missed the playoffs last year, but weren't bad. And they've gone all in on a bunch of like really bloated contracts. That being said, yeah, I'm going to give them the loss. I, the Rams still have a lot of, a lot of playmakers. There's no depth on that team. So hypothetically, you know, if, if this week comes around and they're beat up, Jets could go in and possibly win, especially if the Rams are kind of flailing. Even though I don't think they'll be, I have the Rams like in the hunt for the playoffs in the NFC. Uh, I think it'll be too an important, too and too important a game for the Rams, and they come out with it. Yeah, um, and then home against Cleveland. Uh, I went to one of the worst Monday Night Football games I've ever gone to a few years ago. I think we lost twenty three to three. Trevor Semyon. That was last year. Trevor Semyon. It feels like eight years ago last year. Uh, Trevor Semyon was in that game, so it's hard to tell. This will be um, Baker against Darnold, hopefully with, well, this late in the season, nobody's going to be healthy, but um, I like the Browns this year, and I know this is at home for the Jets, and I kind of like the Jets at home, but I think this might finally be the year, take 10, of Cleveland figuring it out and they finally, in my opinion, make the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. So we're going to give Cleveland the dub. And so now the Jets are thoroughly out of it. They have taken the goodwill that they had. And they have flushed it down the toilet. I think this is the most Jets thing possible. Uh, and they go to New England in a game that doesn't mean anything for us. And we lose. So yeah. Um, like I said, um, I will... Pick the Jets to beat New England. Shit. When, <laughs> when the Jets prove that they can hang in a game with New England. Uh, the Jets, so I mentioned before, the Jets haven't beaten New England since 2015. I don't think we've played a one-possession game since 2017 or 18. That's not good. Um, New England, it's just the coaching. They're just better coached. Um, and and, and I, just, I just can't pick a Gase coached team against a Belichick coached team. I won't do it. So, let me pick this up. Uh, so where does that leave us? This is the part where we'll edit out because I forgot to keep track. So six and 10 is the final record that I've got the Jets going at. And for me, um, this isn't a big surprise. We went seven and nine last year but that was with a pretty easy second half schedule. This year we have one of the tougher schedules in the league. I thought you were gonna sneeze, so I like stopped. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say other than no. Just, how dare you? I was yawning. Um, this, that's what the season's gonna be. It's gonna be That's fair. Yeah. That's six and 10 is a very yawn. See, cause you don't get one of the better draft picks and you suck. 
Oh, it's perfect. And it's a perfect jet season, and that's why I'm picking it. So, all in all, uh, there is no hope for the Jets. Um, I would love to eat my own words, but I have been right nine years in a row. So, why stop being right now? So, um, yeah, that's that's my little Jets thing. I'm actually kind of excited, even though I know their games are boring and they're going to lose a lot of them, to, to get this part going. I never expected hockey to overlap with football, so I didn't know that would be a problem. We were planning on doing something with the Yankees and the Mets. Uh, we had we had filmed like a season preview that got wiped out the uh, the window. What a that's not a phrase that got just pushed to the side um, in in March when that was supposed to happen, and then the season kind of crept up on us and we just weren't able to get to it. But football a little bit easier. One game a week for us. Uh, so I only have to cry once a week, uh, as opposed to the Islanders right now. Um, and yeah, so this is what we've got. Uh, let us know below if you're a Giants fan, let me know what you think of the Giants. I think they're going to be pretty bad as well. I think New York sports are just terrific right now because the Islanders are the only hope and they just rip my heart out. So that's where we're at. Okay. I'm going to go up and eat some pizza now. Um, but we will see you next time. Like and subscribe below. That's it. We're just going to end it. We're just going to end it.